One of the key links in our supply chain, the Mississippi River, is really at a position of weakness right now. Hello and welcome to this edition of the State of Soy. I'm Aaron Putsey and I'm visiting with Mike Steenhook. Mike serves as the Executive Director of the Soy Transportation Coalition. And Mike, we always come to you about this time of year as farmers are heading into the field. We're getting a little bit of an earlier start to harvest. With that, all eyes and attention turns to how are we gonna move this crop as it comes out of the field. You've done some work, you're monitoring as you do throughout the year, river levels, water levels, including the Mississippi River. Set the scene, if you would, as we're heading into this harvest and river levels. 80% of soybean exports occur between the months of September and February. And so when you are setting foot into this time of the year, you need our supply chain to be operating at full throttle. And unfortunately, one of the key links in our supply chain, the Inland Waterway System, i.e. the Mississippi River, is, is really at a position of weakness right now. We're currently watching a movie sequel that none of us want to watch, and that is low water conditions on the river. We had historically low water conditions in 2022 uh, at a very inopportune time, which was during our harvest season, and we currently have lower water conditions this time of the year than we were last year. And the impact of that is that makes barge transportation less efficient. You can't put as many soybeans per barge because you're concerned that it might scrape the bottom of the shipping channel because you have less water in the channel. And then also the shipping channel becomes more narrow. And the result of that is you can't put as many barges together to form one single unit or flotilla to get down to places like New Orleans. So that really has a, a detrimental impact on our competitiveness, the economics of barge transportation. And that's one of the key reasons why U.S. soybean farmers are so competitive is because of things like barge transportation. We really hate to see that shipping channel become less efficient. And, you know, people may hear, well, it's the Mississippi River. It's hundreds of miles away from where I'm in the field right now harvesting. But speak to the fact that this is really a local issue for every farmer. The temptation is to think, well, that's just a more collective kind of macro kind of impact. Well, it actually has an impact on an individual farmer's wallet. Because what we'll often see is barge transportation becomes less efficient, which means that barge rates will often go up, which means that the price that a farmer receives at point of sale, often at a barge loading facility, will go down. So farmers will, will often say, all of a sudden my basis has decreased 20 cents, 25 cents, 30 cents. Well, that's not because of anything that they did wrong. It's simply because the transportation system is not as efficient as it normally is. And those costs are unfortunately disproportionately passed on to a farmer. So you've got this, again, this big macro issue, the Mississippi River, that has very much an impact on an individual farmer's wallet. What can we do about the Mississippi River other than hope it rains more? I mean, it, you know, hope isn't a strategy. So, so what are we doing to make the Mississippi perhaps bit, a bit more reliable during these times of erratic water rainfall events and water levels? Well, one of the cardinal rules in supply chain management is don't put all of your eggs in one basket. So there's not a whole lot we can do about Mother Nature, but there's a whole lot we can do about to what extent do farmers have an option B, an option C, an option D? When you have these kind of experiences, it should redouble your efforts to try to promote other modes of transportation, like rail, like uh, trucking, like the Great Lakes, uh, all of these other modes of transportation, these other supply chain options we should be continuing to really promote those and pursue those. And one of the things that we saw last year in 2022 is those farmers who had a decent and acceptable option B, option C, having local livestock in, in a state, having more soybean processing, having rail access, all of those types of things really can help build some resilience for local farmers. And fortunately in the state of Iowa, we have a lot of that. There's other areas of the country where your options are either the Mississippi River or the Mississippi River, and those farmers are less positioned for success. And so having that resiliency and that redundancy for your marketing opportunities is something that's really key, something that we're really continuing to promote and pursue. So transportation, always a, a critical issue. It's the reason why the Iowa Soybean Association is a proud partner uh, of the Soy Transportation Coalition and why we are staying centered and focused on these issues, not just during harvest, 
but throughout the year. Reporting for this edition of the State of Soy, I'm Aaron Putsey. Farming is a competitive business, and you need equipment you can count on every single day. That's why for nearly 90 years, farmers have entrusted their grain handling to Brandt Agricultural Products. Brandt's full line of hardworking conveyors, augers, grain carts, vacs, grain bagging equipment, and tillage equipment are made to deliver the competitive edge you need to lead the field and are manufactured here in the USA. For more information on our full line of products, visit Brandt.ca today.